So today they announced that SBA loans are completely gone. The $349 billion that was allocated for small businesses is gone. And I know, oh my God, two, three, four hundred businesses that haven't seen a single thing. I know all the stuff hasn't gone through and it's kind of a frustrating day. Um, but luckily we're back on the cast and we have some fun conversations about weddings um, and we kind of drifted off a little bit as we always do. But guys, my name's Jeremy. I own Jeremy Lou Photography. You're listening to Raw Focus, um, an amazing podcast that I kind of created with just some conversations I'm having with local people so far based in the Reno, Nevada area, but I'm hoping to get out further the more people I talk to. I'm a photographer, educator, mentor, TikToker, YouTuber. I'm pretty much everywhere. But I love, I love focusing on education, and that's kind of where I'm at um, with everything. So thank you guys so much for listening today. We are, um, uh, yeah, we're, we're, in that, we're in that period right now where um, everybody is self-employed like myself, kind of doing these new things, pushing out a little bit, and just trying to figure out where we're going to get our money from and when everything's going to be open. So it's April 16th right now, uh, 2020, and we're just trying to figure out life. And I luckily have amazing people that are trying to figure out I was with me so I can kind of talk my way through it. Um, we don't know what's going to happen. So by the time this comes out, everything might have changed. And I, I, I don't know where I'm at right now. Um, waiting on unemployment, waiting on PayPal or, or uh, PPP that I did through PayPal. Hopefully we get something out of it. So that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, Trump is still president and he is killing it every day on the mic. I listen to a couple podcasts, uh, The Daily Show and Seth Meyers, and they're very anti, uh, but they do it in a funny way. So um, as long as he gets shit done, I am happy. Um, so guys, we have uh, Carrie McLeod on the podcast today, and uh, she is somebody that I met about three or four months ago when I joined Wedding of the West. And me and her just never really crossed paths before. She's a wedding coordinator. She owns... Uh, she said yes, weddings and events in Tahoe, and she links her uh, website in there as well. So I'll even have that in the show notes for you guys to peek at. But uh, she's kind of an inspiring person to me because she um, uh, she has a lot going on, and she's very positive all the time, and I like that. She's also a fast talker, which you guys will see, which I've always said fast talkers, they just have a lot of information they got to push out, and they're going to push it out. And I notice I talk fast as well. So I slow it down a little bit for this podcast and hopefully you guys uh, can understand me as I'm talking. But we kind of talk a lot about religion, um, where she's from, and we kind of get into weddings, awards, and if that even does anything and what it actually takes to be a wedding coordinator and what they actually do. Um, because a lot of people don't spend that money on wedding coordinators and they are probably the most important thing besides your photographer, of course, on what you should be using and hiring as you... Um, as you kind of start booking your weddings and really just kind of the insecurities that we have about our business right now. And that's kind of where we're at. So uh, whether you're in the wedding industry or not listening to this, this has stuff to do with, with you and, and life. So I hope you take something out of it and I'd love to hear from you guys. You guys can find my email of course um, anywhere in there, but it's just Jeremy Lou at gmail.com. And I'd love to hear your comments or concerns about what we're talking about and any show ideas as well. I'm happy to do, but I'll keep this interview status kind of going here. Um, if you guys please would share, subscribe, post, whatever you got to do to help me build this channel and this podcast, I would love it. Um, we also have the full YouTube uh, experience as well. So you guys will actually see us visually. If you'd like, uh, download the podcast and you can actually watch us on YouTube as well. And that'll link in the show descriptions too. So without further ado, thank you guys so much for hearing me ramble. Um, here is Carrie McLeod. What's up? How are you? Good, how are you? going? Good, thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks, I'm nervous. <laughs> for what? I'm always nervous to go, um, I don't know, I just get nervous. I don't know. Yeah, no, I get it. I mean, I, I always get anxious before I go and do these, but I always get anxious more because like, I have to lead the conversations. Yeah. Um, that always just makes me a little, a little weird. Yeah, totally, um, totally. Yeah, but we can minimize the screen. Cool. Okay, close the screen. 
So um, we are going to go live here in a little bit, um, and it's pretty easy. Yeah, I've been um, watching along. Cool. Yeah, so I'm not really focused on the um, the live part. I just have it there just to kind of promote the channel a little bit and the, mm -hmm. uh, and the podcast. Um, so the podcast is called Raw Focus, and it comes out once a week. So your episode will probably come out in like a month or so. Okay. Um, but we'll have this kind of raw stuff for people to look at. You can share and promote. And uh, although I want to um, use as, as much promotion as we can for those that watch this, and, and the numbers actually go up every day, so people are watching it even though they missed the live, yeah. we can use this as a promotion tool for you as well. So, you know, promote you. But, but really, my question is going to be geared towards you as a person because I, cool. I met you, what, like three months ago? Yeah, Four not very ago. long ago. Yeah. Right. And so I feel like um, with anybody, even people I've known for like years, they know a lot about me. I know very little about them on the personal side. I know what they do for work and so forth. Yeah. And I feel like with us wedding vendors, it's kind of the same thing. I want to know you as a person so that I feel like I can call you a friend. I feel like I know you and, and it just makes everything a little bit more realistic on my end. Cool. Um, no, I like that because I think, especially in the wedding world, um, you know, we get to know each other's businesses, but we don't get to know each other. So, right. um, so yeah. And the other thing I'll say is when I look this way, I'm looking at you right here. Okay. So don't feel like I'm not looking at you when you're talking because I'll do this okay. and think my computer's <laughs> right. Like you're right there. Gotcha. Um, but my camera's over here. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So give me one second. I'm going to get yeah. dog situated, all of that. Um, cool. and, and I'll be back like in about two seconds. Oh wait. No, actually, no big rush. Yeah. Kids, we're going on. My yeah. Took care of it. So oh. I told them I was going on a, a, a thing today. They needed to nice, <laughs> yeah. day for schoolwork. So yeah. have you been zooming the whole time pretty much? Uh, through all of this. Yeah. Like, so yeah. I used to zoom for work a little bit. Um, you know, cause most of our couples are out of state. Um, right. but, um, yeah, over the last like month and a half, it's just been insane. And I've forced myself to Zoom actually because it forces me to get up and brush my teeth and my hair because otherwise right. I'm in my pajamas in a bun and look awful and I'm just not as productive. So I have right. to tell myself every day to get up and at least do one Zoom meeting so that way I know I get up and get at least dressed. No, I agree. <laughs> I, um, yeah, like I made this YouTube video um, recently about like what you have to do just to get up and get ready. Yeah. Um, and we did one with the Northern Nevada Business Association or Bridal Association. And mm -hmm. that, that was key. It was like getting up, getting ready. Cause, um, oh my God, even like I was, I was listening to the news this morning and a judge in New York or something was fining lawyers for not dressing up for the zoom calls because they were really? just like either in bed, like one lady, I guess was like still in, under the covers in bed. Like she forgot. And she's like, Hey guys. Um, <laughs> but they do their like depositions yeah like that way and he's like you still need to get dressed and i'm gonna find you if you don't get dressed but yeah just getting up getting ready and that's self-employment in itself that's home business right so yeah. if people aren't having that schedule of getting dressed getting in the morning being in the office at 10 or 9 or whatever um it definitely puts a toll on everything it does it totally does and i know just yeah because i've worked at home for the last like what five six years now and right it is it's routine every day you got to get up and you've got to put yourself in a routine get up shower brush your teeth make your breakfast um get your right. morning drink um and then start work and really like i said that one time at weddings of the west designated an area where like you have your office right there um my office is kind of taken over because the boys each have their room, but um, Will, oh. he's only in sixth grade, so he didn't really have a full working desk area. Right. And, and so we're working on getting that set up, but in the meantime, he's been kind of using my space, which is meaning I'm moving out, which is fine. Um, right. I'd rather them be <laughs> comfortable right now, but um, yeah, so it's just been a, a weird thing, but Zoom oh. is our life, even with the kids. They're right. Zooming every day with their teachers and their other students. And I saw Will the other day, um, zooming one of his classmates. I'm like, dude, you're supposed to be working. He's like, Oh, we're doing math together. And so they were just like, they would be in school. They're buddied up. Um, yeah. and so his buddy was on zoom and he was on zoom and they were walking through the math problem. So it's just, I don't, I don't know it. how, I don't know how people do it or kids like families do it. Like we have four kids. Um, mm -hmm. three of them are in school and they all have to use some sort of electronic device. So like my laptop's pretty much gone. Yeah. Uh, my wife's laptop and we use an iPad and then we got my daughter like this cheapo iPod or uh, laptop um, for, for Christmas school. like two yeah. years ago. Well, we, yeah, we got it for her and now she's using it for school and now I hate it. I'm like, this thing is shit. Yeah. And so um, it's been weird, but like, how are people doing it that don't have that amount of electronics and they have I, multiple kids? Right. I think what they're doing um, and the district wasn't prepared for it, but I think they have the packets that you can go to the school and get. 
Um, right. So they have the paper form because I know a couple oh, of doing Will's that. classmates mm -hmm, have the paper forms um, because they just don't have the electronic ca capability to right. handle all of their kids. And so I think that's something the district didn't think through, um, but they did come up with an alternative. So I know a lot of kids are working off paper packets and they can either scan those in and email them in or they can just turn them in. Um, if we go back and if they don't go back, then they just, they're going to have a day where the kids can go turn them in. They're not graded right. assignments. That's the thing. Well, at least Washoe County school districts, they're not graded. They just, yeah, I heard that they were like pretty much whatever the grade you have now is a grade you're going to get kind of thing. Right. Yeah. My yeah. older son is loving that because he's at UNR and he was like, my grades have never looked so good. Right. But <laughs> that's know, like, is that nothing. an education? Like, is that mm -hmm. even, it's so it's weird. Not. Yeah, I was like threatening my kids. I'm like, you might get pulled. I mean, so my, our kids go to um, Doral Academy. So they go uh -huh. to a, not in Washoe County. So um, we feel like our school was, uh, and, and they've all been in here for about a year or so. So we've always been Washoe County before, but we had some huge issues with Washoe. And yeah. so now um, with Doral, oh my God, as soon as we went on digital, they, we did about two for Washoe County. It was smooth. It was smooth as butter. All the teachers had like pre-recorded things and then they go on live and it's, it's amazing. So, cool. um, yeah, I, I hope that. that Washoe County is getting there, but that's one of the things, you know, it's just such a big organization and yeah. yeah, they're trying to do everything for the masses when you really need to section it off for different things. Right. And I have a strong connection to Oklahoma because that's where all my family is. And of course, I'm yeah, a family I that's that. going through that school district. And I will tell you, I am kind of thankful for Washoe County at this point. Some of the stuff they're yeah. going through. Um, right. Oklahoma was not prepared even in the slightest worse than we were. Um, and so just to see what their kids are doing, I mean, they're basically doing coloring sheets at this point. And it's like, oh. so that's where a lot of the parents are stepping in and saying, okay, we're going to take over. Whereas right now watching their curriculum and stuff, I mean, it's not the strongest. I mean, it's not the best. I feel like the teachers are doing what they're being asked to do. Right. Um, it's not going to be graded or anything like that, but there is some structure going on. Like I said, with the math, I did see like honest math going on, um, mm -hmm. you know, and you know, different things that they're doing, trying to keep the kids moving, but it's definitely not like school. But I did read a, a blog the other day and it kind of gave me reassurance that, you know, when our kids are in school, um, they have multiple resources and multiple teachers, they have faculty, they have, you know, resources out of the wazoo for computers and everything else. Don't right. try to be them as a parent. You can't, <laughs> there's no way right. we can do that. And while we're frustrated with the situation, we just can't do it. We just can't. Right. So, um, do agree. what you can do. Um, if you want to implement additional reading like we have and things like that, at least they're keeping their brain smart. Um, right. There's nothing we can do. I don't feel like Will is going to miss out too much by not doing math for like new concepts for the next month because they're at the yeah. of school anyway. You know what I mean? Right. If this all happened at the beginning of the year, I'd be a little bit more, I think, worried. But right now I'm like, you know what? They're dealing with so much with all this. Um, yeah. I mean, they've got to, they've got to push through and hopefully we come back. Uh, hopefully everybody comes back strong next year. So yeah, um, there's gonna be some interesting guidelines. I think it's gonna be interesting to see. Like yeah. we were even just talking like, so are water fountains. They're gone. You know, they're gone. Things right. like that. that um, every, are we good? to? Yeah. Like how, like how big the desks are going to be or like how far mm -hmm. apart the desks are going to be. Uh, all that stuff is, um, yeah, all that stuff is, is stuff we haven't even thought about and how they have to implement it. I'm just thinking like restaurants and when we go shopping and all that yeah. stuff, like what's going to, are they going to keep sanitizing carts for us or, <laughs> you know, like what do we do? Right. It's a different um, world for sure. Yeah. She said, yes. Weddings. weddings. Yeah. There we go. Oh, go back. Oh wait, that's it. She said, yes. Wedding planner Cypress. Nope. Mm. Uh, she, she said yes weddings said, yes weddings with an s yeah it should be a white um, logo with like a pink like there stripe. we go i have yeah. to go all the way and events you have 612 likes right Ish. no i have 15 let me see if i can pull it up there's only one that showed up i don't have to i was going to tag it but i can do that later too um, I don't know if I can pull it up on here. Let's see. Uh, I think I can do it here. I guess it's a popular name, yeah? She said yes. Very, very big on the marketing. Yes. Do you get, uh, have you gotten anybody that, uh, like a gay couple that's gotten upset with that? Um, I have. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can talk about that now or we can talk about it later, but. Um, we'll bring it up. Yeah, that's, yeah, actually, that's, yeah, let me know. What, what like. I've had a couple instances um, of my contract and my wording and all that, that mm -hmm. somebody has been upset and I'm kind of like, 
like when I made it, you know, it wasn't okay. It wasn't said, a thing. Yeah. Right. Um, and I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> like I, I'll adjust it. Obviously we're, yeah, we're not making it for like the public, but we're making it for, uh, for everybody else. So I'm going to um, hit us up on live here in a couple seconds. Okay. Um, cool. And how do you say, say your last name for me? It's so funny because I was li- listening to the last podcast with the McKellen. Um, yeah. So, so we're Mac, we're MacLeod. So just think Ma- of the clouds. Okay. We're Scottish. So, so that's McLeod. what I wrote. I wrote Mac and then cloud. Uh-huh. That's so exactly like, how it is. Yeah. McLeod. Yep. Okay. And we're Scottish. Uh, so we have the Mac rather than the Mick. Right. And yeah, like I was talking to Kyle. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It's the MC and the MAC and, and it's like, you know, McDonald's. Yep. Um, and then like, or sometimes people call McDonald's McDonald's and you're like, no, that's wrong. But like, it's spelt out that way. Yeah. And there's a, there's mm-hmm. another hyphenation of something. So um, I'll say, I'll do it during the introduction. I do that after we do everything once you're gone. Okay. So, okay. Um, but that's it. I just want to make sure we get all that information in. Um, so when I get going, I'll just uh, introduce the show and then we're just going to keep talking. I have some topics, but if there's something you want to ramble and talk about, just lead into it. And it's again, me and you have a conversation. So if it's, uh, we're going to talk about the coronavirus, we're going to talk about schooling. We're going to talk about your business, uh, Oklahoma. Yeah. I saw that on your page. Have you been married for a year or this year? You got married um, this year? No. So, um, we, November will be 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Oh, we're going to be, this year will be six years. Oh, nice. Yeah. I think on your Facebook, it said you got married in 2019. Oh, <laughs> no, we got married in 2014 and we actually eloped cool. and then had a wedding later. So totally opposite of anything a wedding planner would encourage people to do. Well, why though? Why, why would you do that? Um, because we had two different households and we, right. um, our work schedules at the time and the kids were little um, and it was so hard on them because if we went out to his house um, in the evenings to spend time with him, I mean, the time he got back from work, it was six o'clock. Um, my kids were going to bed at 730. Um, right. So it was just one of those things of like, we're getting married. Why don't we go ahead and just elope now, put it all mm-hmm. together. And then for our families later, we can have this kind of wedding kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, did it just uh, go live? Yeah, it's going live now. I know yeah. I would secretly do it. <laughs> People don't know. Let me go to the live thing. Why didn't it just, I hate to just, just doesn't come up. Um, hey everybody. Welcome to raw focus. Um, the live version of our podcast. Um, I'm with a good friend of mine, Carrie here who I met like three or four months ago. We're in the wedding industry. Mm-hmm. I'm surprised we haven't met sooner, but right. that's kind of my fault because I am theoretically an introvert and a hermit and, and, um, uh, you're currently the president of wow. Right. Yes. Weddings, Weddings of, the of the West. And I was never part of these organizations at all. And this year I was like, I closed my studio and I'm like, I want to do more mm-hmm. stuff. So I went out and I picked two organizations that I joined and wow was one of them. She We're owns, so glad to have you. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, it's, it's been fun so far, so it's been cool. I mean, I knew a lot of the people in there and it's, mm-hmm. it's really supportive. So you own, she said yes, weddings and events. Mm-hmm. Um, you're based in the Carson Reno Tahoe area but I'm sure you travel worldwide. Um, oh yeah, I'd be glad to go wherever. I, right. My dream is to do a Scottish wedding. Let's go to Scotland. Oh my God, yeah. yeah. And, and yeah, we, I think we all get into this. <laughs> we want to travel. We want to kind of do something and it's, it's finding a way. I know when I first started, I was always about like, hey, book me, let's travel, let's go out, let's, yeah. you know. And then I'm like, I'll give you a discount. I'll, you know, mm. pay for my way there. And then after a point, I'm kind of like, I'm doing more work than I should. Yeah. So I still travel, but they have to love my work because they're going to spend two or three times more than they should right. on, on just me. Um, but thank you so much for doing this uh, podcast with me. Um, it's been fun so far. I've been doing this for about two weeks and I think you're like my seventh or eighth um, episode. Cool. Yeah. So They've been fun I, to watch. I've enjoyed them. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I don't even know who's watching this. I mean, I don't know who's live or showing up. And, you know, I'm happy if I get three people on there. But like I said, these are for the podcast. So, like, it's just interaction here. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's just been fun. Tell me about you. Now, I'm doing this because I want to learn more about the people in my life. And, and I feel like I just don't know people or I haven't mm-hmm. gotten the time to know people. And again, it's totally my fault. Um, but I hear you talk at these events, um, at these meetings. And um, the more that I kind of research you or the more that I'm around you, I see how connected you are within the wedding industry but I know there's more than that to the wedding, yeah. uh, to the wedding world. So with that being said though, let's talk about you and the wedding world right now before we kind of go into your history. Gotcha. So, um, you want to know about me or my business? Both. Like, yeah. So, oh, okay. so you, you're from Oklahoma. 
I am born and raised proud Oklahoman. All my family is still there. Um, right. I am all about Oklahoma roots. Uh, <laughs> Oklahoma football, not University of Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, because we're right. not Boomer fans around here. They suck. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, so, big rival. Is that where you went? Did you go to the state? Yeah, Oklahoma State. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then, um, yeah, so Oklahoma, all my family's there. I love football, um, but, you know, it's it's. I think there's something about home, no matter if it's Nevada, you know, New York, Oklahoma, your roots are there. It's, it's where you right. started, and so right. when I hear the word Oklahoma, I get excited i get happy right. it's home to me and you know anytime i can get back there right now it's kind of difficult because of everything going on and my parents both have had health issues the last you know years so they haven't been able to really travel too much um but yeah it's home love it um but i came to nevada um southern california and then up to nevada so i've lived oklahoma orange county oh, wow. now nevada why yeah. did you move why what what was the move for so a lot of people, we're going raw, right? So let's go raw. Yeah, so um, a lot of people don't know, but I was married previously. And my ex-husband um, is originally from Southern California. And I met him in um, Oklahoma. And okay. um, when I was finishing school and all of that, went down and lived in Huntington Beach, California. And we actually lived there for 10 years where both of my kids were born. They were born oh, in wow. Fountain Valley. Yeah. And so still have a lot of ties there as well. Um, but there came a time in that marriage and in career um, where the recession was kind of happening, where he was affected and the marriage was kind of going under. And I have family in Oklahoma and he had family in Reno. Um, and it was kind of one of those things of let's flip a coin. So I worked for the federal government at the time. And right. so I applied to kind of both places, um, put applications in, was looking at getting hardship moves so that way we can move closer to family. Right. And Reno hit first. <laughs> oh, so, so, okay. So mm -hmm. your kids are from your ex-husband. Uh-huh. And yep. then, um, so you guys all moved to Reno yep, so that you guys did. could I all be together first. still. Yep, okay. I came first because um, from the time that I accepted the job with the federal government, um, when you apply with the government, it's usually a long process because they have to go through background checks and you know right. everything else under the sun. Government, so it's usually yeah. a couple of months um, process, but just weirdly enough, from the day that the job opened to the day that I moved to Reno was a little short of 30 days. Um, and so we had a whole life in Southern California. So I had to report up here. So I came first and actually lived with some family. Um, and while I found a house and kind of got, you know, in the flow of work. And then while my ex-husband stayed down there and kind of packed everything up and my right. older son was in school, elementary school. So we were getting him done for the year. And just, so there's a couple months lag before they got here, but they did get up here, um, October of 2010, I think nine, right. Somewhere in there. So about, yeah. yeah 10, 11 years ago. Yeah. That's yeah, awesome. And then, um, how old are your kids now? So Wyatt is my oldest and he's 18. He's a freshman at UNR on a music scholarship. And oh, um, Will, yeah. And Will is my athlete and he is in sixth grade. So he's 12. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. That's, that's a huge gap too. Yes. Um, yes, it is. That's it a took gap. us a while. <laughs> right. Well, I, I mean, I, you know, my, my youngest son right now is, is almost two. And then mm -hmm. his next siblings up is nine. So we were, we were done, you know, we were done. Yeah. And then, and then we weren't done. Surprise. Actually, one of those one of those destination weddings that I was talking about, yeah, a, a week long excursion to Puerto Vallarta, and oh, uh, all inclusive, you know, everything was paid for. Yeah. And that's kind of what happened. Um, so then that led you into, and then you you got into the wedding industry. Like how how did that happen? Is that is that kind of like with all of us where you kind of like I think I can do this. Let me just do with a couple, and then all of a sudden it became a business. Or were you always yeah. kind of like. I'm type A, I know how you got to do things. Like how does somebody get into the wedding coordination event business? Right. I think you have to be a little crazy, first of all, because there's so much to it. But I've kind of dabbled in events a little bit, even in Southern California. Um, there was a company down there that even when I was working for the federal government, I'm just a natural creative. Um, right. And I just needed, you know, time. And there was a big gap in my children. And so um, there were times where I just wanted something else. And so I started helping a company down there just on the side. Um, and then just started running events a little bit there down in Southern California at that time. Sweet 16s were huge. I don't know if you remember NTVV, My Sweet 16. Oh, yeah. So that yeah. Was, that's basically what this company did. They focused on those kind of parties. And so like that's large what I was scale doing. like that too? Mm -hmm. Large scale. Oh, I mean, you have to think God. Orange County, um, LA. I mean, yeah. come on. The money is my there. Wife's those from, uh, my wife's from Valencia. Um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I kind of know the world. Like, they didn't do that stuff. But, but yeah, yeah. everything's kind of a little over the top. Over the top. Well, I mean, well, even much. my older son's birthdays, I look back and it's kind of funny because – well, not funny, but my older son to my younger son because there's such a gap and life yeah. changed so 
drastically. My younger son was the parties where, you know, Thomas the Train was coming to our house and, you know, we had ponies <laughs> in our front yard and cowboy right. shootouts and, you know, craziness where my younger son got like Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> it's like, here right. we go. It was just a different life. But no, that's kind of where I got my start. And then when we came up here, I really was focusing on just providing for my family. You know, um, I was transitioning into being a single mom. And what mm -hmm. did that look like? And so I just had to really focus on that. I couldn't do events at that point because, I mean, I didn't have sitters and certainly couldn't afford it at that point. Right. Um, and so it wasn't until um, divorce happened, single life happened, I met my husband, um, my now husband, Alex, who's a yeah. part of She Said Yes. And um, he was really the one that was like encouraging me you know, because I started going through some health issues about that time. Right. Um, and I had to take a step back from my career, which was really scary because I made a very healthy salary and um, didn't right. know what to do. Um, but a couple of friends were getting married and, you know, dun, 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 you have that background. Yeah. yeah. Wait, yeah. How, let's like, back that up. How did yeah. you meet Alex? Where did you meet him? So um, uh, a lot of people, I'm a Christian, very open about mm -hmm. that. And church has always been a big which, part of my yeah. life. And good, randomly, yeah. um, the church that I was going to, um, you know, my ex was part of that church as well. And it was just really awkward. Um, everybody kind of knew what was going on. And I right. pulled up to the church one day was like, I cannot be here anymore. And so, so I was like, okay, where do I need to go? And I literally Googled churches near me and right. it landed me at one of our Sparks churches. And um, Alex happened to be going there, which I didn't know at the time. It took us a couple of months to even know each other, but um, right. I joined a community group, a Bible study, and he was my community group leader. So he was my oh teacher. Oh my God. So <laughs> that's... <laughs> That's, I mean, that's the fantasy, right? That's ultimate fantasy. But I'm older. <laughs> <laughs> Even better. Even better. So, yeah. I mean, the old church, um, that's weird to me. So, um, I, I know I talk about this a lot. I'm not um, hugely religious. My, my uh -huh. dad's Buddhist. My mom's Catholic. And instead oh, wow. of them teaching us either, uh, yeah. they taught us nothing. So, we didn't go to church. We didn't do anything. Um, the most church I'm getting is now from shooting weddings, right? Gotcha. So, I, isn't it taboo to get divorced? It, you know, and it's interesting you're saying that because um, I was raised in church and I yeah. was also in a mindset as a kid. And I'm not saying my parents taught me this, but this is definitely what I thought in my head um, right. that God hates divorce and that I'm going to hell if I get a divorce and right. a lot of things. And I will be honest that I struggled with my faith at that time because I thought I was doing wrong. And I thought I was, you know, in the eyes of God, you know, was going to be condemned and all of these right. things. Um, and I think it's, it's, um, faith to faith. I know the Catholic church views this a lot different than um, a lot of other church. You know, I've, I'm part of a non-denomination. Um, mm -hmm. And one thing that they do is, you know, whenever um, we were talking about getting married, um, Alex was um, a deacon at the church at the time and they did talk to him and they needed to know my story and why we got divorced. Um, and when all of that oh, wow. kind of lined up and understood why I had to leave that marriage, um, it wasn't because of infidelity on my part or, you know, anything really. Um, right. So, yeah, and that's a whole other story for another raw footage. But, um, yeah, so we did go through all of that and um, definitely went through some church counseling of, like, you know, what does God say scripturally? But um, I am one of those that believe that God may not love divorce, but he sure loves people and divorcees. And um, like in that. that, he teaches love. And I learned mm -hmm. so much about myself. So anybody that does go through a divorce and they're um, a faith or they have family that's a faith, a faith that is judging them, yeah. I always just go back to that man. He loves you. And um this too is just one moment. So yeah. Did you did, I mean, did the people at that church, I mean, before you left it, did you feel like they were looking down on you? I mean, that's, that's actually my biggest thing. So yeah. I'm a people pleaser and like, me too. that's the actual thing that like would make, that would make me just not even go to church. Like if it's right. something I loved, I would just like, I'm done. Like, cause everybody's going to look at me this way. Right. And you know, um, yeah, you experienced that. I did. I did. And I think the thing is, is everybody, um, especially if they haven't gone through a hard relationship. I mean, that's the one thing for me is being super sensitive to people's relationships. Um, everybody's different. And um, it wasn't, we just didn't quit. This was a 15 year marriage. This was or a 15 year relationship. This was um, a very hard marriage on both parts. And both of us would sit here probably honestly today and say it was the best thing we did um, to divorce. But um, from that, right. that church, a lot of people were looking at me like you just gave up or um, God can save right. marriages and God can save you. You're just not praying hard enough and you're not doing more. You can do more. It's, and it's like, it's I've been going through this. stuff that I yeah. hate. It's that stuff within anything religion or not or there's like this blind like you know and yeah. yeah blind faith we say it all the time but like there's always something that can can break that rule a little bit 
Um, right. And for me, I'm, Jeremy, the one thing that I stood on through all that and my punch back to all that, and I still tell people that are going through these hard situations, if there is one person in that marriage, I don't care if they're a Christian or not, if they are not holding up their end of the deal, meaning vows, or they can't keep, you know, I always kind of tease right. and say, uh, playground rules, you can't keep your hands to yourself and you don't know how to say things nice, <laughs> then what are you doing? Like, nothing's going to change. If somebody's not holding up their part and they're being right. untrue and they're being abusive and they're being all these things, then what it, why are you fighting for that? You don't exactly. deserve that. Nobody deserves that. And so for anybody, whether Christian or not, to tell somebody to stay in a marriage just because it's wrong, mm -hmm. I, I just can't stand by that. I can't. And, and I'm it's, not it's crazy. promoting divorce either. But um, as no, a Christian, and I've think, been you one know, of those. And yeah. I don't think anybody's promoting any of that. It's just, it's, it's that thing. Like, you know, we say it with work all the time, right? Like, if you hate yeah. your job, find something else. So, yeah. like, you know, if it's making you unhappy, you know, uh, within legitimate reasons. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's good insight. I, 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 again, like I have this one mentality of religion and church and all that, and I know yeah. it's completely off, but I've never even given it a chance. And so that's just my bad, but yeah. let's lead this but, into, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was leave. about to say the same thing. What's next? <laughs> yeah, cool. So, um, I, uh, okay. So the, the whole elephant in everybody's room right now is Corona, um, <sighs> COVID-19. And I know that we've been working together pretty closely um, through the groups and organizations, mm -hmm. uh, wedding posts and all that stuff on really how to help vendors go through this. We're noticing a lot of vendors are getting scared. They are uh, nervous. They're concerned about their business. Yeah. And really, it's kind of showing us really how our local wedding industry is. Um, I know that we do great work, but I feel like a lot of, a lot of people are artists and not business owners. Yes. And we're starting to see that where, where maybe this one month off of them not being able to book anything, they're going down, down, down. Yeah. Um, I know that you being president of WOW, uh, Weddings of the West, you are looked upon on, on kind of telling people where to go, how to guide them. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about your business. So yeah. you have a wedding um, and event coordinating company. Now, where are you with everything? I know that people are postponing, not booking, but how are you feeling um, about the situation and how are you working while not working? Right. So essentially we're working for free at this point. And that's one thing I've had so many conversations. Um, one thing as a, a wedding planning company, um, just as coordination or planning, you know, we, we tell very often to our clients and to vendors, we're a liaison. We really are. We're, we're right. that middle piece between you guys and our clients. And so we've had to kind of just shift gears. At least we have in our company is okay. I'm bride and groom or bride, bride, groom, groom centric, which we'll get into in a little right. while. Um, yeah. But um, I'm also vendor centric. I also need to make sure my vendors are okay. So one thing that I've been really focusing on lately is um, making sure that they're okay. And um, one of those ways that I've done is I've kind of stepped in the gap and reached out to um, all of our clients on behalf of our vendors and said, look, this Good. is not an easy time. This is really hard. And like you said, a lot of people, um, I'm a photographer. I got a camera. Yay. Yeah. Got an Instagram. I'm a photographer. And they're just, right. they're not business. They haven't taken the time to learn business um, right. and they're failing and they're going to fail, unfortunately, because they just don't know how to make it through these times or have um, had good business practices up to this point. Um, and which is causing a lot of problems. So but I stepped in on, a, on behalf of a lot of these vendors and just saying, Hey, ways that you can help them um, make payments towards your balances, reach out and talk to them, buy gift cards, all those things. So I've been sending those emails directly to our clients. Um, right. And a lot of my vendors have called back and been like, wow, I just got a random payment from so-and-so. Thank you for doing that. I didn't have the courage to do that. And that That's $500 awesome. helped me right now. So we've been really trying to help our vendors right now of just stepping, like I said, into that gap. Um, wedding planning right now is just crazy because everybody's looking to us for answers. Um, I had a bride a couple weeks ago, so frustrated, not with me, but just the situation. Um, she's getting married in June and she's just like, surely, you know, more, surely you have something you can share with me. Right. And I kind of giggled. I was, I wish I did. I wish I was the CDC themselves. Boy, we would be in a different situation um, right. you know, with just all of this, but I don't, I know what you know. So really what I'm doing a lot with our company right now, it's a scheduling nightmare. Um, but I'm just trying to stay as educated as I can um, with all the happenings and really just stepping in the gap and trying to reach them before they reach us with answers of like, okay, now we're, we're in April. What does this look like for you? Um, and really trying to keep them educated and on top of things, but essentially we're working for free. Um, a couple was talking and was like, we need a refund. We lost our job. And I said, I would love to do that, but I lost my job too. I did. Right. I'm working for nothing. This conversation right now that we're having was not part of my package plan. 
Um, so is there anything I can help you with right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm trying I, to keep it in perspective, but um, really it's just, I've just shifted gears and really have been trying to be um, proactive in helping you guys um, stay afloat. That's my goal. Right. And, and yeah, I mean, as a, as a the coordinator, you're kind of looked upon to do that. Um, which is nice. And, you know, I, I've always said, like, I love having coordinators on as part of the wedding vendor system. Yeah. Um, but I don't get many coordinators on my weddings. Um, and it's one of the first yeah. things that I push, who's your coordinator? And they're like, we don't have one. And I'm like, what are doing? I'm like here's a list. You really should just at least talk yeah. to them, see if they can help in any way. And, you know, it's, it's, it's always extra income. It's always extra money that they're always worried about. Yeah. Um, so I've had to do that myself where I'm reaching out to all my clients in the next three months and I'm like, Hey, here's where we're at right now. If you need to reschedule postpone, please let me know. I'll send you, send me a list of available dates and we can kind of yeah. go from there. Um, so I think it's, it's smart that you're doing that. And yeah, your vendors must freaking like, they don't have to do the extra work. Who knows if, even, if, if they even thought about doing that. Um, right. but that, well, I think that a lot of them are just in panic cool. mode. Yeah. I think right. a lot of them are panic mode and, um, everybody's going through the loan system and unemployment and all of it is so like, it's overwhelming when you're sitting there on those forms and filling things out and pulling your tax forms and waiting for a phone call for someone to call you from the bank. And it, it's so much. And so, but in the meantime, it's like, okay, what can I do? I'm very much a solution thinker. And maybe right. that's why I do what I do in my life. I'm very pet peeved when, or it's one of my biggest pet peeve when people just complain and complain. And when I say, okay, but oh, what yeah. are we going to do? And they haven't even gone there in their head yet. And it's like, I understand we have a problem, but what's our solution? So for me, I was like, okay, what can, she said, yes, what can I do right now? Right. Um, and that's what we're doing while I'm studying and waiting. Um, our company is going to be okay. Um, you know, we um, have grown in a way, um, you know, that I think is healthy. Um, and we've done things and taken on weddings that I know that's going to benefit us um, as a business, not just like, oh, they said they want, she said yes. And um, right. just don't take on everything. And I think that's it's a downfall to a lot of people right now in this scheduling nightmare and trying to give deposits back. They have a lot of clients that don't value what they do and what they have done. And that's one thing I'm um, in every single meeting I've had with every one of my clients when they're like, well, I don't mind paying you your full balance if we cancel, but I'm not paying my photographer. They haven't done anything. And, right. and I've had just to stop and educate them of like, you know, they made the contract. They reached out to you to verify dates. They've um, asked you they about engagement the date shoes. out completely. Yeah, mark the mean, day it's... out completely. Like just a deposit doesn't mean we're just holding a date. They've already done things on the backside that right. you don't even know about. Um, they've scouted locations. They've um, talked to other photographers for second shooting. They may have already paid a deposit towards their second shooter. Right. There's so many things that that money has already gone to to ask for that back. It's just, it's, it's, not they're not educated on it so when i sit and talk to them and like hey you may think they haven't done anything but here's what they've done they just kind of get quiet they're like i had no idea and i'm, <laughs> I'm like we're always working we're not right. all just at home and be like oh look tomorrow's the 17th i have a wedding let me get my gear ready like, we've know. already gone through a process and our time is money and it's, yeah it's 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 weird how yeah like when people are like hey you, you photographers make so much for 10 hours of work or whatever <laughs> and i'm like eh, yeah there's, there's like 40 yeah. hours of editing on top of it yeah. So well, for you uh, guys, it's not the day up. That's the hardest part. It's the editing. The it's all after. Editing. I mean, yeah. Oh being my gosh. Us video. Like my wife, mm -hmm. you know, she does hair and makeup. She she does hair and makeup professionally. And yeah. when she goes into a wedding, she's done. And she makes just as much as I do at a wedding. But yeah. she's done that day. Granted, she has yeah. to pay her products, get all the stuff set up, yeah. and all that. But like in six hours, you know, she gets to go home and just hang out and chill. And I'm like, oh, we made the same amount of money because people <laughs> will spend the money on that. Right. And and that's yeah. ultimately where it's at. Have you applied for um, any of the loans, the SBA and employment? Have you, are you doing that with your business as well? Unemployment, yes. Um, I did get an, um, an email the, a couple of weeks ago about the, the loan. And right. Alex and I, again, faith side of us, been praying about it. We have not made that step yet. Cool. Um, I'm kind of just letting it filter out financially. We're okay. Um, we, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just, something in my gut is saying hold off. And I don't know if that's a good, good thing. It might be well, a suggestion, but as <laughs> I'm not of, doing it yet. <laughs> Well, that's yeah. good that those, those feelings mesh. Yeah. Oh, it's just indigestion. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, just kidding. So that's going to go fly. <laughs> as of this morning, the money ran out. Yeah, that's what uh, I read. Um, but they're asking for $250 billion. So I think when that happens, I would just consider applying and yeah. just see if you get it or not because not everybody's getting it. I finally got something last night in the – Oh, good. I went through PayPal. So, um, and I'll be talking about that later on social. But hopefully um, – Hopefully that kind of comes out, but I'm trying to see if everybody's actually doing this. Now, one of the things that I mentioned right before we went live, that's actually at the beginning of this podcast as mm -hmm. well, is uh, the name of your business, right? Yes. It's She Said Yes. Now, yes. I, have, uh, I shoot 
norm. I shoot bride and groom. That's normal. I shoot bride and groom weddings. I shoot bride and bride weddings and I shoot groom and groom weddings. When I set up my contracts for everything, I set it up with bride and groom. Um, bride is always one groom is two. And that's just how everything's set up. Even my task management software, when you buy it, it's built in that way as well. And uh-huh. so I never even thought about adjusting it for a bride and bride, but I remember having a couple who was pretty upset with me that I didn't pre set that stuff up. Even the questionnaire I was like, right. uh, there's no spot for groom. I mean, there's no spot for bride two or two brides or groom, yeah. you know, and so forth. Your name of your business. So whenever I see the, she said yes in anything, have, has anything come back at you negatively for that? And are people taking it personally? If so. Right. So it's a great question. I'm so glad we're talking about this because first of all, um, I've said it already once before I'm a Christian. So people automatically think Christians hate gays. Not true. Right. Not true. Let me just talk about my family and a whole nother raw footage. And they would laugh at that if they actually right. knew me and knew my family and right. who's in my family and what we associate with. Um, so that's not true. <laughs> um, but when people see, she said, yes, they automatically think it excludes the guys. Um, they automatically oh, right. go there. And I've had it from both sides um, from grooms, saying it. Um, and then I had a wedding professional this last year, which I had to kind of call that out um, privately um, because they were like, oh, I would never hire. She said yes, because they don't support gays. And it's like, whoa, hold up. Screech marks. Yeah. Do you even know where my name came uh, from? Do you even know right. where it goes? You're uh, assuming a lot of things. Um, so whenever we start a business name, right? Um, just like Jeremy Lou Photography, you probably had a list of names like Jeremy's Photography, right. Jeremy Lou Photography. Um, maybe it was some random name, um, things like that. I know for me, my last name is McLeod. No one can pronounce that name. So doing something, Carrie McLeod or McLeod's Weddings or whatever right. was just out of it. I didn't want to go there. And then so many people have like the Jeremy Lou or, you know, the Carrie Their Diane. Name. That's my first yeah. name. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah. I just want something different. And when I started really researching and looking at marketing, I'm like, hey, what is wedding? When I hear somebody gets engaged, what are the people say? Oh, she said yes. And so I started looking at numbers. I started looking at hashtags. I started looking at all of those things because eventually I want to be able to sell my business. Um, and I want to sell that name because we are um, a trademark copyrighted right. name. Right. You don't want to sell your name wedding. business. I mean, yeah. So, yeah. and so when I started looking at all that, I thought it was a fun um, thing, but also in the bigger scheme of things, when I looked at my business plan, I also focused on the word yes, rather than the she said, right. because everything so that you, we do is more of the yes. Um, right. meaning, yeah. So when somebody comes you weren't to even me, thinking about it, right? Like you weren't mm-hmm. even, yeah. it didn't even cross my mind, Jeremy, that this would become a, a anti-gay or a gay supporter. Um, and I've had so many people try to tell me like, Oh, aren't you scared of that? And I'm like, absolutely not. I stand by that name. I think it's fun. I think it's easy. I've had a lot of people on the other side say, Oh, I love your name. That's so cute. Um, right. you can't believe how many times I've been tagged around the world. She said yes. And I'm like, thanks for that. Yes. Right. She said yes. And, and it's just, it's a global three words. Um, <laughs> but whenever somebody comes, to me like that wedding professional and said that I was like, you know, one, that's just very ignorant of you to say that. Um, I'm looking at it from a marketing standpoint. And she said, yes, markets. You can see it on napkins now. You see it in right. uh, Hobby Lobby and Michael's on napkins. It's, it's everywhere. Um, and for us, it does. Sometimes we do get people that find us based off of, I Googled, she said, yes, Lake Tahoe. And it was like, oh, wait, that's a hashtag. There she is. And I've had people find right. me that way. Um, so for me, it's a marketing thing. Um, and I think it's fun, but for us, because as she said, yes, grows, we're getting into consulting and more stuff like that. Um, and life coaching with, um, you know, the yes word, oh, of cool. like, right. you can really go out in the world and do anything you say yes to. If you want right. to run a marathon, all you have to do is say, yes, I'm going to do that. And once you say that word, then everything changes. If he says yes, she says yes. It's just more and you'll see this a lot of times on my website in different places. I say it often. It's more than a ring on the finger concept. Um, it's, it's bigger than that. And so if somebody right. wants to say, oh, she's very limited, I have same-sex weddings this year. I do. I've had them in the past. Awesome. I, yeah. You know, it's just, and the, weirdly enough, the few weddings that I have done that are same-sex, I've had to sign NDAs on. So I can't post about them. So I can't even put them out there if they're out there. Um, yeah. So I know yeah. I, I, I love and hate those. I have a few weddings that I'm like, Oh my God, you know, and then they're like yeah. a little higher end. And, and then I'm like, I'm never gonna be able to share this with anybody. <laughs> no. And you know, I have to remember that it's, it's their day and not my ego not day. Mine. And I, I mm-hmm. think photographers are t- tend to uh, have the biggest egos about anything. And I admit it too. like, we go to a wedding, like, no, I need to get this shot. I need to go out yeah. sunset. I got to do this instead of the whole, like, well, what do the couple want? Like, you know, what do I they want? One time I was shooting at the GSR and we had the opportunity to go to the roof 
And oh. my, the clients were like, eh, we don't want to anymore. And there was like a video team with me and we're sitting there like, what do you, you mean kidding? you don't want to go? I need to get these shots. Yeah. And they're like, no, we just want to go in and dance. And I'm like, all right. So, I, yeah. so now when people say that, I'm like, even like the most amazing sunset. I remember Dave and Wally's when we used to do weddings there. Yeah. Um, there was a red sunset. It was like insane, red moon, red whatever. Yeah. And uh, they're like, no, we're cool. And I'm sitting there like, oh my God, I'm going. Do you know what myself. you're missing? This yeah. is such and a I'm money like, shot for me. Yeah. But, but yeah, for me, it was like, for me, it's going to be my, it's going to be my thing. Um. <laughs> how is how is business changing for you then with the whole coronavirus and COVID? I mean, obviously it's changing now. I feel like what we're doing now is going to be what we're doing. Are you still booking weddings? Have you booked a wedding in the last month? Um, I what, have. What's and I going hate on saying now? that. I hate saying I that. Three. So yeah, so this time of the year, I mean, as you know, we're usually getting lots of inquiries. It's the spring of the year before you're getting married. Um, right. We're getting inquiries. We booked um, one yesterday and we booked a couple over the last month. Um, nice. In the the last year, we really changed our structure. Like we got rid of day of coordination and what most people call management um, just because it was more work for us. It was harder for us. And we didn't get that connection with them. It was like, Hey, I'm going to book you for day of coordination. I'm going to plan my whole wedding and 30 days out. I'm going to talk with you. And I, and for me, I was always like, I hope you got everything in a, in a, your ducks in a row and I hope you haven't forgotten anything. Right. And in 30 days I had to try to put this whole wedding together. It was stressful. And half of the people didn't have things in order. Their timelines were a mess. They didn't have their photographer yet or whatever. So right. we got rid of it. But through all of this, I've had to stop and reevaluate and be like, okay, if we're going to be a business that sustains, yes, there's other things we're doing. I've got to open it back up. And these weddings that I did book are management um, with the potential of moving up should they need it in the next couple of months. Um, one is a wedding planner cool. in New York. So I'm pretty confident she's got her poop in a group and she's gonna yep. be able to handle it um and another one is you know just we'll see what happens but i've had to because i've got to have income coming in um but i did make sure too that they're not prime dates and i know that's weird to say too um it's all in my right. game and scheduling game right now i made sure that they were friday weddings not a saturday um before i'll even consider some of those weddings um but yeah. So we are booking just not as heavily as we normally would this time right. last year. I had more than half of my 2020, believe it or not already booked. Um, and I think I have 12 weddings for 2021, which is good. It's right. good. Um, not I mean, to be disappointed, but definitely yeah, it's, it's a weird but it's time. Still, but, but I'm still like, that's just my mentality. I'm very like type yeah. A. I'm all about numbers. Me I'm all too. about, you know, saying like, Hey, I booked 35 a year. I mean, I even have a piece of paper back here that I track mm -hmm. how many weddings per year and how much I made for weddings. So like yeah. the goal is the number of weddings go down, the amount of money I make goes up yes. to yes. show people that, Hey, raise your rates. You can actually do it. Um, but yeah. it's, yeah, it's, it's so tough. We were even supposed to have, um, a bridal fair on the sixth, uh, fourth, fourth of April. Four. Yeah. So a couple weeks back, and I know that you're heavily involved with that as well. So yeah. that's going to get postponed, rescheduled eventually to one of these dates. Um, but that was supposed to be prime, like booking time, right? Where everybody starts yeah. to book and, and push through. So we were all excited about that. Um, yeah, it was going to be a fun show too. I mean, rock my wedding was supposed to be something so different. Um, it was going to be very edgy. I mean, we had, um, you know, not to give too much, but some crazy dancers in there and just right. the experience from the second they got in, they were going to be in a, a show, a, a performance. Right. So um, not just and, your you know, typical bridal fair talk to right. vendors and all that it's more interactive right yeah and then especially with like something planned which you guys do too is mm -hmm. having education because for me education is my heart i love educating people on on weddings like whether that's a company or whether that's a bride and groom of what to really expect before you get into all of this right. and so i was really excited to see you guys go through that so we are looking at the spring again of next year um okay. and it's so hard because everything was on such a great momentum and we had everything right. ready to go so now we're just, we took a step back and just taking a breather through all this, but we have some really neat things now that we can implement even more because we have more time. Um, I, so yeah, I, that's smart. I mean, it's smart. Yeah. It's just one of those bummers that, you know, we were, we were all kind of waiting for, but everything yeah. was getting postponed and pushed off. So we totally get it, you know, weddings yeah. and everything. So we might even get postponed another month, but hopefully not this year. Um, yeah. I don't want to. So as you're talking to all these different uh, vendors and, and people that are kind of at looking at you for help um, and you're kind of just noticing things, this is kind of an off, uh, kind of off topic. What are people doing that, that you're kind of like eking about or you're shrieking about that you're like, why are you doing this? Is there anything that you're seeing these vendor vendors push out saying on social media that you're like, stop doing that. It's going to kill your business. I know you're scared. 
Um, yeah. I have a couple things if you can't think of anything, but yeah, yeah. are you well, seeing anything? Yeah. So the first thing is probably not super wedding related, but a lot of people allow their current clients on their Facebook, which most of my, if you're um, ever done a wedding with me as a client is probably because you're a past client. And um, that's mm. my personal space. That's my, my personal area. Right. Um, and so I you mean that once on you've done their wedding, you'll add them? I'll like add after them if they done? friend me. Yeah, and, and I've talked to them. I've had brides say, oh, I tried to add you on Facebook. And I'm like, go follow me on Instagram. It's a lot more fun. Like that's my right. personal, it's a lot of my, my personal beliefs. Right. Um, I try to be very, um, and this is one thing that I'm seeing with a lot of wedding vendors and I've had to talk to a couple of frienders on this is people mm. are watching you and you have a lot of your current um, clients and um, business relationships on there and you're right. going off the freaking deep end. I mean, you're posting stuff about conspiracy season you know negative yeah. this and political all that. And shares and all that crap yeah i can't i can't i can't and i think that's the biggest mistake i'm seeing right now is um yes we're all like freaked out a little bit and yes we're all worried about what is the the future of wedding business just in our immediate area but calm the hell down come on right. like I, I just i can't and and to post every single thing as a fact that's the worst thing you can do for yourself if you right. don't have the time to actually go fact check it fact don't check post everything. it <laughs> Don't do that. And that's the biggest thing that I'm seeing um, right now is vendors is just, they are relying on every post, everything somebody sees as factual. And then now everybody right now is also, um, you know, I pray about this and I'm praying about that. And I'm like, but two right. seconds ago, you're over there saying F you. And it's like, I just can't. And that's the biggest thing that I think as vendors, like you got to find some consistency, even on a social media platform. Right. It's just, you know, yes, it sucks. And there's moments where I'm on there like, oh, another one bit the dust. Fantastic. But at the end of the day, it's like, you got a business to run and people are not going to find you credible if you keep posting ridiculous stuff. They're not going right. to be like, they're drama. Even if they're not I drama, agree. they're going to think mean, they're I, drama. And most of the stuff people give two shits about. I mean, it's right. like, I, I've been on social media since it began. I built mm -hmm. my business because of social media. So I only had a personal page forever. Then I built a business page. But yeah. even my personal page, everybody's watching this live right here. I'm very business focused. So right. I share everything I'm doing, podcasts, YouTube and all that. And I'll post pictures of my kids every once in a while. Yeah. And I used to be that guy that, yeah, I would like rant and everything. And then now I get to the point where I'll type something, I'll look at it and I'm like, eh. Because what I'm noticing is that in a year from now, those memories that come up, sometimes yeah. I'll see those old posts and I'm like, what was I even like, who cared? What did I even get out of it? Right. Like and I posted this ridiculous. thing. Right. And I'm like, I posted this thing. It didn't resolve anything. Even yeah. if I post like you're, you're for the president against the president, I, that's the number one thing I see right now is anti or pro. Yeah. And I'm like, whatever you post is not going to affect anybody else. Like there's nothing no. that I will post today about, Hey guys, you should donate all your money to Jeremy Liu because he's a really good guy. <laughs> yeah, he's really cool. I'm not going to change anybody's reaction. And I think people right. feel like if they go on to like news four and, and try to post like their comment that all of a sudden people are going to be like, got it. Nope. You know what? You're so right. Done. You're so right. Like, it's over. It never happens. So yeah, being able just to, that you said it correctly, being able, um, if, especially if people are following your clients because you never know your client is. Luckily I've built a business where people trust me, know me and, yeah. uh, my personality is, is key, you know? So sometimes I, you know, I cuss, I have tattoos, I have all that, yeah. but people don't care. Yeah. Um, tattoos were like the scariest thing for me, uh, getting those. <laughs> I don't have them just because I'm a chicken. That's my only reason. I think yeah. they're cool. Like I think some yeah. of them, like especially girls with like I was just talking about this with some people. I Jeremy, that you would be a whole another raw footage thing that you may want to come video. I'm anti needles. I'm myself. Like I'm <laughs> definitely afraid of needles. If somebody were to like needle me here, like I freak yeah. out. But I can get like full tattoos. Um, it's just, just like scratching. It. it hurts, but you you can talk through it. You can actually even Facebook through it while you're going through it. So I mean, yeah, you, you can just watch do me it. cry. I'm just, yeah. Who cares? Cry for, can you cry for an hour straight? <laughs> Maybe Nobody I don't cry know. for that long. Yeah. You're like, after 10 seconds, you're like, eh, the first, the first time they hit you though, is like, you're like, <laughs> yeah. But once it's on there, you're like, okay. Cause it's literally like this. And then he gets off this. So it's like these little, it's not like a whole, yeah. like the TV where they just keep going. And it's, I'm also worried too, that if I got a tattoo and this is what I was saying to some of my friends yesterday, I'm such a random thinker. Like my husband cracks up because one minute I'm talking about Cheetos and the next minute I'm talking about Dr. Pepper. It's just very random in my head and I have no right. inner monologue. It all comes out. And so I feel like my tattoos would be so random. Like I said, I'd have Cheetos with like a wedding ring and then maybe Olaf over here. And then on this, it would just be so random that I just don't know. If, <laughs> I would look at it in 10 years and be like, what was I thinking? So I don't know. Yeah. Well, now it's all art for me. So now like every yeah. tattoo I get has nothing to do with anything. Are you going to keep going up? Cause I don't, uh, see well, I'm, I'm, I'm like here to here now, 
to my chest. So I'm yeah. probably, this is going to go up here. I was supposed to have a tattoo appointment this month. Um, yeah. and then I'll go down, but I don't think I'm going to do any neck things because <laughs> this part really hurt and going up here is going to hurt more. And that's super oh God. tender. Yeah. That's like, well, yeah, it's just that like, it, it doesn't, it doesn't, the nerve endings, how it works, it doesn't feel where you're at. So like when he was working uh, on here, I felt like he was up here. And gotcha. so I'm sitting there like, bro, you're so high up. And he, I like looked at him like, he didn't even touch this area. And like anywhere around the chest, you feel like it's on your nipple. And uh, yeah, that's, just, see. that's not as mm-hmm. sexy as you think it is. It's just never no. one of those feelings. Um, pass. Yeah. It's, uh, well, you know, to, to certain points, I see some people getting some stuff and I'm like, all right, cool. That's kind of how it works. So what's your, what's your daily workload are, like yeah. now? Like, what are you doing? Because uh, we kind of talked about, you know, how you feel like you need to get up, you need to shower, you have mm-hmm. at least one Zoom call. What's your daily workload? And do you feel like you're actually still working or do you feel like you're on like mini vacation? It's weird. I feel like um, typically once December hits and December, January, we purposely don't book winter weddings. We'd never book December, January, February, very rarely March. We did this year and it was a freaking blizzard. And I was like, this is why I don't do this. Um, right. Cause I don't like winter. I don't like the snow. I hate it. Um, <laughs> and so during those times, I typically have those like um, one, two calls a week. I'm kind of booking people. It's more just admin stuff, but it's not super heavy. Um, and that's what I feel like this week um, going into this week is more of like my traditional off season of things are everybody's a sitting duck right now. They're waiting kind of to the end of April to kind right. of see what's next and what the new guidelines are and all of that. And I know some stuff came out yesterday about you know, some of the beaches in South Lake, but, um, but typically like the last few weeks, I mean, I would be lying to say that I didn't have a couple moments of wanting to throw my computer against the wall and be like, I'm done. That's it. I'm out. Like, it's just too much. Um, because right. everybody from vendors to clients to venues, everybody was calling the planners and which I'm appreciative of. Um, but it was a lot. So typically my work day right now going into this week, is a little bit lighter. Um, I do get up, um, you know, in the morning, get up, I shower, kind of get ready for the day. Um, you know, do stuff like this. I try to be done. I'm being very, very strict about, um, my family time now. Um, I did a post this morning on my personal Instagram about 10 things that I've kind of learned during this time. And one of those things is, um, gosh, I, I really, the whole family time is a lost form. And I think, you know, now that we're forced to be home, those times of, evening dinners and all of those kind of things. I think we should go back to that. And that's one thing that my schedule is kind of allowing for now is me to be more present um, with those and um, all of that. But my daily schedule right now is just a lot of emailing back and forth. Um, But by five o'clock, I'm done. Like I'm I'm literally turning off my computer. Whereas before I wouldn't do that. I'd always have it on the bar somewhere or somewhere in sight. So something ding, I could at least answer. Um, I'm not doing that because I'm like, there's (laughs) nothing I can really do that can't be done tomorrow. And so I'm getting into that mindset that I should have learned five years ago, um, you know, have those business hours, really be strict to those. But I turn my computer off, put it in the room and off I go. Um, other things is um, dinner every single night now is a must. We're home. There's no excuses. Um, like no you, reason you're making shouldn't. dinner or you're just having dinner together? Um, so both. Um, I People don't, they think wedding planners are like Jennifer Lopez. They think that we right. are these domestic people that love to clean, love everything to be Right. We're, a lot of us aren't like that. We're like that in our professional lives. But when it comes to our personal lives, like I don't like to cook. I don't like to clean. I love sleep. Like I am not like one of those girls that's crafting every day. I'm just right. not that person. So cooking for me, um, I just don't enjoy it at all. But oh, through this time, I'm like, this actually isn't as difficult as I've always made it to be. It's super easy. It's just planning ahead of like one of the store, making sure you have everything you need for the week. Um, right. We've been cooking almost every night. Last night we cheated and did curbside Panda Express. Um, but, um, for the most part, we've been cooking every single night and we were laughing a couple of days ago. We're like this whole, like cook every night, eat healthy thing is not as bad as we try to make it out to be. Like we always right. say, Oh, it's so much work and it's so hard. And it's all the excuses those, everybody gives. It's so easy now. It is. It's so easy. And how so are the, April is a lot about just being a mom and a wife right now. How are the kids cool. with, um, with all that? So like, I know my kids, um, we're at home a lot. Yeah. Um, I went vegan on them like three weeks ago. I saw that. Um, so it's been good so far. I've been, you know, losing a ton of weight, gaining more. It's been weird. It's like opposite of everything I've thought of before, but I've been yeah. cooking a lot more lately um, and it's been easier to cook. Um, but I don't know if they know how to react to things because, you know, even at the table, they're still trying to yeah. get on their phones or yeah. as soon as they're done, they're just walking up and out. So we haven't really taught them on the whole, like, please excuse yourself. And granted, I didn't yeah. grow up that way. I grew up Asian where get your bowl, go to your room, come back, get more Eat. while, yep. you know, my grandma's still cooking the whole time and yep. like never stop cooking. 
are your, how are your boys doing with that? And how's your husband doing with that? Are they like, this is weird. Or are they feeling like, Oh, this is, this is how it should be. I think they think this is how it should be. Um, you know, my husband comes from a really amazing family. I'm very blessed to have his uh, family here in Reno and they really do value family dinners and family time. And I think he was raised that way of, you know, um, whatever mom cooks, you eat and you thank her afterwards and elbows off right. the table and, you know, and we didn't really have electronics as kids growing up. At least we didn't. I mean, Nintendo didn't come out till I think I was late junior high. I don't even know. Um, right. So it's like we didn't have cell phones and all that kind of stuff. But definitely telling the kids, you know, to sit with us, um, family time, put phones away for a couple minutes, to start conversation. I think they're enjoying it. My older son actually um, went to San Jose. His girlfriend, her name's Carrie as well, um, goes to Ooh, UNR. But weird. she... Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> weird story. The last two girls he's dated has been Carrie. So there's like this. Oh my. Do they look like you? No. No. Is there mm-hmm. something we have to? Okay, cool. <laughs> and neither <laughs> one of them look alike. Total opposite. Okay, good. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So in any case, um, he'd gone to San Jose to visit her for just a little bit um, at the very beginning of spring break. But that was when kind of all of this hit. So he's been in San Jose this whole time. Um, Holy because we crap. Didn't go, yeah, for him to come home. But he came home on Saturday. We met him kind of halfway in Sacramento right. area with her family. Had an in and out, um, six feet apart, totally, parking yeah. lot lunch kind of thing, um, and brought him home. So we've only had him home with him this last week, and he had he's a pizza delivery guy, so he's been working yeah. um, and oh. <laughs> making crazy tips right now. Um, so I he's can doing imagine, that. Yeah. Yeah, but um, my younger son, I think, is really benefiting from this. I'll be honest. I think he is. Um, because there's such an age difference in the kids, um, I've always kind of struggled parenting-wise to, oh, I have an, a young adult, and then I have this little kid, and trying to always make sure that the little kid, um, Halloween's and Christmas is always just as important as it was for my older one because he's not in that right. state anymore. So this time with him has been so amazing just to get to see him do his schoolwork and, you know, go out and dribble the ball with him and, you know, just really right. to get to like focus in. I've enjoyed it and I think he's enjoyed it. I, you know, both of my kids every single night when they are home before they go to, before my husband and I go to bed because we go to bed earlier than they do. Right. Um, we're not strict on bedtimes here. Um, <laughs> they come jump in our bed every single night and we have like this 30 minutes of just laughter and jokes and video making and um, they're doing that again. And that's all. Anything, yeah. I am so thankful for this time because of that. I, I feel like kids, um, you know, they don't know the struggle that we went through back in the day <laughs> of uh, you know, like I always, I always tell my girls, I'm like, you see like a phone used to be on the wall and yeah. I had to shit switch out a cord. I had to go to radio shack, get a yeah. long cord that yeah. I could then drag it all the way under my door into my room so that I could have privacy. But yeah. my parents could still pick up a phone anywhere in the house and then listen and to listen. everything that I said. Right. Yeah. Like they're just on their phones all day, you know, like just texting. I'm like, we didn't even have yeah. a text. Mm-hmm. Like we had to say full sentences. If I wanted to call a girl, I had somehow to get her number, yeah. call her, but then ask for her politely through her parents yeah. and then get to her. Now I can't just go on Facebook and be like, yo girl, what's up? What's like, up? What are you doing? Yeah. How's everything going? Uh, I, you know, I can't do that. And that's, that's kind of where we're at now. So yeah, but I think bringing them back down to that level Mm -hmm. of like, Hey, put your phones away. It's kind of nice to have, even though Lindsay and I are horrible at that. We're constantly like, you know, my work is on my phone. So I'm constantly just like this all day. I think we're all guilty of that. Yeah. Yeah, We're guilty of it. I'm not going to push it to them, but you know, I also read something where we're all addicted to phones. And even though our brains are freaking, you know, developed and, and we still can't get off giving your phone to, you know, an undeveloped 10 year old brain yeah. um, is, is like crack because they're just going to be like, I don't know what to do. So I always, I feel guilty, but like on the other but end, on, I, on the other I don't side, do though, Jeremy, the one thing that I stand by too is we live in a world of technology. They're going to have to learn it. They're going to have to. And not that I think they should be on their phones and video games all day, every day. I don't think that's healthy even for us as I'm 42. I don't think it's healthy, but at the same time, like they've got to learn those techniques because if they're going to compete in this world, and I know I'm going to have a lot of haters by saying this right now, but they've got (laughs) to be able to do social media. They're going to have to, they're going to have to be able to do a PowerPoint. My 12 year old knows how to do PowerPoint. Like what I did not learn that until I was in my thirties. But he's like, Oh no, you can do this, this and this. And I've had them help me with stuff. So I think on one side, it's so important that they don't lose everything because this is so hard for them. They've already lost their friends. They've already lost their interactions everywhere else. Give them something that does give them some of that normalcy. Um, But again, during dinner and stuff like that, without even having to really say it just organically, it just kind of happened of like, put your phones away. We're sitting and eating and having fun and everybody's in the kitchen. And yeah. yeah, I, I think that's that's smart and that's normal, um, and I think that's what we should be doing. Of course, you know we're not going to judge everybody based off of, yeah. of this time now, where you're spending way too much time with your family. 
Um, <laughs> but it's it's definitely it's definitely a different vibe. And my office is in my uh, garage right here, so I'm in my third car garage. So I get to gotcha. kind of come out here, close the door, uh, I have a little humidifier right here, and just let it let cool. it kind of happen while I edit yeah. work. So one thing that I wanted to talk to you about is um, uh, I'm noticing that once a year in the wedding industry, we get a surge of people that are winning awards from like, let's say Wedding Wire or The Knot. Mm -hmm. And I 100% know that it's because people are signed up for these that they get these awards. Yeah. Um, but I also know that a lot of vendors will use these awards to kind of be like, no, dude, I'm Wedding Wire's top 10 in the world. But I'm like, how are all yes, 10,000 of you <laughs> top 10 in the world? Um, and I, I, it's a good thing. Like when I was part of Wedding Wire, when I paid for it, I got that as mm -hmm. well. What is it's it that uh, this is kind of a PSA for brides right here? I mean, is this something that they should even care about? Like if somebody were to say that they're an award winning florist, coordinator, DJ, photographer, or is it something where everybody just kind of gets it and you're like, eh, like it doesn't really matter. So I think I'm, I'm on the fence on both. I think one side, um, it's kind of cool because, you know, it's based off reviews and we are not a company and I will stand by this and any of my couples will basically tell you this. Um, I will always after weddings send a thank you and be like, wow, it's so nice to work with you. Um, you know, right. those kind of things. Um, but I just don't send all these random over the top multiple times because I get them from right. even other vendor venue vendors like, Hey, take a minute, write me a review. Please write a yeah. review. We worked with you last year. What were yeah. your thoughts? We just, so I don't do well, you that. You can't so even you can't my, even go to a gas station without answering fifteen questions right, about right. everything. And so a lot of our reviews are raw, um, are genuine, and um, I'm always so like, oh my gosh, they left us a review. So it's all based off reviews, and I know people go cool. chase that and they want the badge and they want all that. And we post it on our website, yes, and I am proud that we have a company that is you know got good reviews and all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, um, it's not something that I think brides and grooms or whoever out there um, should just solely be basing that off of. When a customer asks me says hey do you have reviews or because on my page I don't even have a review page on there because a lot of people do that on their website I choose not right, to I hate that. Yeah, not I don't things that. right and wrong um, just yeah. I choose not to so what I tell them to do is go to my Instagram there's all these people holding this I said yes to she said yes sign I do that for every one of my clients that signs stuff says that they'll agree to do it in the contract um cold direct message them talk to them about your real experience how did I communicate what was my processes and I don't even know who you're contacting I don't even know there's your real review right there go to my right. Instagram call them message them and I've had tons of people say yeah I reached out to two or three of your brides and this is what they said and I'm like cool great can we move on now um so for one side of it yes it's really <laughs> really cool that wedding wire and all that does that but on that side of it and right big brothers listening wedding wire and the knot they want those badges because it gets people on there to write reviews because they're review based and that's how we think we're paying right. them money and it's a give and take. Oh, I'm getting reviews, which is valid. I would rather my customers go to Google or something like that, which I don't have a big presence on there yet. I'm really going to try to work on that. I'd rather that be on there because I feel like that's boosting SEOs and everything else. I'm kind of on the fence, like one side, yay, hey, I got this award, but they're really not best. 10% in the world. You're, you're just right. You're, yeah. It, it's just weird to me because like, I don't get those awards anymore because I don't pay for those services. Right. I'm super. And you know, whether you're part of it or not, but I'm super anti paying wedding wire, paying the not paying Yelp yeah. for anything. Um, Yelp right Yelp. now. I hate Yelp. Oh my God. Yelp is, I mean, we have a local contact, uh, Michael mm. who is with Yelp and he's amazing as a dude, like amazing, but Yelp as the company, holy Can't crap. Like on. I have, I have close to 300 reviews and 28 of them are showing and the rest like 200 something are like, these are non-recommended. And every single one of those reviews is like a legitimate client I've had over right. the past 10 years. Yep. And How do they my, even get away with that? Your review site and you monitor our reviews. Shame yeah. on you. Yelp. I don't like them because, well, I have many it's reasons. Just, yeah. Yeah. But. It's just annoying. But like also like it, it's expensive. I was paying like yeah. when I was with Yelp, I was paying like 300 bucks a month. Oh, wow. uh, Wedding Wire was like 298 to get on top of their whatever. Yeah. And, and what's happening is um, I, I didn't know if I, I was getting leads from that, right? So yeah. then I, I quit. And so I actually took that money and I started investing in albums and canvases directly to uh, venues, directly to yeah. other um, vendors. And my business kind of skyrocketed from there. So at least yeah. I know where the money is going and I can keep it local and I can focus on the people that I want to work on. Keeping it local uh, is so good. Yeah. It's, well, it's just the people that you're going to work with and refer and yeah. Um, it's a good business tactic, but a lot of people are like, no, I'm paying like 200 bucks a month wedding wire and I don't know, uh, oh, and I haven't gotten anything. And I'm like, well, that's, that's kind of it right now. Yeah. 
Well, we we're on both of those. Um, and I'll be honest, the only reason why we did Wedding Wire this last year is because they gave us a crazy deal because they were merging and they're like, hey, if you do both of them, we'll just yeah with the knock. For, yeah. So um, and we get more response on the knock than we do Wedding Wire. Um, but yeah. with that, um, they're like like I think I said this at a Weddings of the West meeting. They're number four on my list now of how I even get contacted. They're not even my top list. Most people will say they go there just as a reference when they're looking. They're like, oh, right. she's on there too. Most of my referrals now come directly from venues and vendors, um, you know, 80% of them. So for right. us this year, we're actually looking to um, just continue. Um, I'm saying that too in the midst of a, a virus, a pandemic of like, it's probably well, financially gotta... smart to do anyway. Right. Um, but but um, I mean, we if they were, if, if they're booking, yeah, if you're booking like, you know, even if you're paying, let's say 3,600 a year for it or something and, and you're booking two weddings off of it a year, then it's, you know, at least you're making something off of it. Yeah. But yeah, you have to figure it out. But fourth on your list is pretty low on there. So I mean, yeah. like, you know, your money can go wherever, but also why can't I take, you know, somebody take that 3,600 and get gifts for some gifts for other vendors, gifts your gifts, photographers, yeah. like get some engraved stuff to send to them and just say, Hey, I'm here. I'm around. Yeah. Um, it's, it's smart to do, but I, it's just one of those things. I mean, like whether people do it or not, I know people are doing it because yeah, I have a free account on there so people can still see me. I still get messages every yeah. once in a while. Yeah. Um, it's just one of those things. I just, I don't know. But if I'm, you I'm go on there, jaded about Jeremy, it. And look at who you're right. Like, let's say you look at who's in your category at the top of the list. And this is yeah. not a shot at any business. See, are you really in the same category as them as far as business? Um, right. Like, you know what I mean? That's what I'm right. looking at. I'm like, Oh, they don't even do the same type of weddings. I do They're we're, right. Anyway. Yeah. So that's one thing I'm looking at too. I don't want to be disrespectful on here at all. I'm trying to, like, no, I mean, very yeah, but we're but running a business. you have to look at that part of it too, of yeah. who is advertising and who's on that featured part and really, you know, when you're talking numbers and type of weddings and scales of wedding, are you in the same category as them? Right. And for me, I'm kind of looking at it like not, I'm not. Right. So I'm keeping competing with people that. Uh, well, yeah. And, and that's how they categorize it. And, you know, I mean, I spend a lot of time dealing with vendors, dealing with photographers, and I know a lot of photographers on what they shoot and what they do yeah. and how they work. And, you know, a lot of them contact me for help and I get it. Um, and I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else, but I have skills that I base my pricing off of. Yes. And mm -hmm. for somebody else to kind of come and try to swoop that away from me, I'm always kind of like, well, can you do it? I mean, because once you book somebody for your wedding, the wedding happens, it's over. There's no like yeah. back. I should have booked Jeremy. I should have booked somebody yeah. else. I should have booked whatever. And yeah. so, and we yeah, all just, it. yeah. And it's too late at that point. Cause before the event, I'm a vendor that's trying to book you. And then after I'm like, well, I couldn't tell you before because then it just makes me look desperate and you know like i'm trying to talk you out of things um but that's but where a good so coordinator comes in too because we can um sell that value because one of the first things we do is we talk money with them is what's right. your budget what are you willing to spend how are we allocating that money and if somebody comes to me is like mm, photography is not really big but the bar is so important i'm like cool people are going to get really drunk at your wedding that's so awesome but in 20 years from now when you're looking at that photo of grandma when she passed away i hope that your bar dude over there took a photo of her somewhere right. so i always try to tell them like realistic and you're paying <laughs> for the experience but you're also paying for you know those memories and things like that like again the bar we need a good bar because it makes a wedding a lot of fun i love it yeah but at the same time um, man, photography should be one of your top, and I'm not saying that just because you're on here, should be no, one of your top no, it should be. things that you should be prioritizing because I know that I look at photos from my grandparents, from my great grandparents, and they came from a photographer. They didn't come from just, right. you know, I don't know. So I just, it, it, I think people just need to be educated. It goes back to that education of, yes, <laughs> it may cost you a little bit more, but you cannot get that back. You will be so disappointed, so disappointed if you go right. different. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. I mean, yeah. So let's say, uh, when everything kind of comes back to normal here, um, mm -hmm. and just kind of down the road, where do you see your business kind of going or what, what are you going to do this forever? And if like, what mm -hmm. else would you want to do? What else is in your, in your wheel of stuff to do? I tell everybody if I'm coordinating weddings at 60 years old in another 20 years, shoot me um, because I'm one crazy cat lady. Um, no, I don't want to be doing that. Um, education is for me is everything. Um, I want to be teaching. Um, I want to be out. I don't know what that looks like totally yet. Um, I know that we launched our, we had an intern program where we got rid of it and then we launched it again this year um, and we're really incorporating, it's an educational intern. So it's not me just having free help because they're really not going to be at weddings very much. Right. Um, they will be on some scale of like, watching and stuff but that's where I really want to go I want to teach um 
not on a college level, like in a classroom setting, but OJT, aspiring wedding planners, people that are out there like, I want to be a wedding planner, but they have no idea what that really means. They think it's just making pretty stuff, which is part of it, um, but it's not all of it. So I think in another 10 years, I wouldn't be surprised if we're really focusing more on the speaking, teaching kind of aspect and really launching this intern program even bigger. Right now, it's a free program because I'm needing a couple of years to work out more kinks because we've made it even more educational. Um, But you know, interactive education, I should say, because we're at the venues, we're going to be at the florist, we're going to be doing a lot of things. So these are um, kind of live classes, live workshops that are happening. So they have an application process. Um, so it's not going to be live at all. So they have to be accepted into the yes program. Um, and there's that yes word again. Um, and they have yes right. projects they have to complete and they have to complete so many hours of weddings, you know, where they're watching and monitoring and they have to, you know, go out and talk to photographers and um, watch them from behind doing photo shoots. They can't say anything. They can't do anything. Um, but they right. have to really know the business business and they have to set through accounting um, courses with me and know how to, um, you know, what does this look like from a marketing standpoint? Where's your money going? All those kind of things that's going to teach them the business of wedding planning. Um, and so, like I said, we, we just launched it. What was it last week or the week before? And we've just had tons oh. of people emailing like crazy. Um, and so I think in another few years, that's the direction we'll go in. I think I'll always have a heart for wedding planning and we'll always want to do it on some right. level, but I think it's going to be more of the teaching consulting, that side of it. The, she said yes concept that I'm trying to build um, right. rather than just um, working a wedding. So, right. Yeah. I, I think about that a lot. I think about like, I love shooting, but um and it's always been the joke, you know, like, you know, yeah. weddings have always been a joke as far as like everything, especially in the photography world. Yeah. Like, oh, he's a wedding photographer. But I feel like in the last 10 years, we've kind of excelled where we are the wedding photographer. Like that's yeah. the highest that you can possibly be. And so I like that now. Um, and I still like booking weddings. I still like doing weddings. But like, Me too, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I'm just sitting there like, can I do this forever? Like, can I be this peppy guy? Because me being an introvert, right. um, I'm on for 10 hours in a day. And then all of a sudden I'm drained at the end of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I can wake up and do it again, but it gets harder as I get older. Right. Uh, and it's so, just one of those things you have to keep the joy in everything you do and you have to um, yeah. want to do it. And, and that's for me, I, I think I'm always uh, a next step person. My husband's like that too. Um, he's a visionary. He's always thinking, Oh, like 20 years. And it, it sometimes it drives me crazy. Cause I'm like, Oh my right. God, are we moving again? And he's yeah. like, no, this is, this is later down the road. <laughs> so it's just like, we've had to learn to do that. But I think we all have to have kind of a pivot or a shift. And right now is a perfect time to start thinking of those things because right. we don't know what the history of the wedding world right now. It's a luxury right now. It's it's, um, it's not something something has to have. They can go to a courthouse and get married. We don't want that. Um, but I mean, we have to start thinking plan B's. And I think from day one, when she said, yes, I've always had the, the goal of transitioning. Wedding planning is always going to be a love in my heart and I'm always going to enjoy it. And I'll probably always do it on some level. Um, even if I call somebody we're like, I'm just needing a wedding. Can I just come be with you? I'll be from, you know, the neck down. I don't know. Right. Just I need to see I'll it. Just- because neck down be there i just love <laughs> weddings. there's so many moments that we just love in, in the industry that people don't get to see and that we get to see all the time right um, but i think that's what's next for us yeah good I, yeah so yeah i'm good yeah always thinking forward that's where we should be right now mm-hmm. um so carrie we have a couple minutes left here what i want to do before we sign off live and i'll keep you on here for just a couple more minutes uh-huh. um i want you just to pimp yourself out can you just tell people where to find you what you do whatever your spiel is that you get with somebody for two minutes and just kind of yell at them and let them know. Okay, cool. So, Carrie McLeod, um, we are She Said Yes Weddings. We are based here in Reno. We service the Lake Tahoe area. We did talk earlier about traveling. It's not a big traveler. I prefer to stay local um, for all of my stuff. Um, but our website is shesaidyeslaketahoe.com, and all of our stuff is on there. Uh, we really do focus on full service and design. That's the direction our planning company is going. Um, but we have back, open back up partial and management. Um, but we are a full service planning company with consulting um, for new businesses and for um, bride and grooms. We have a lot of parents calling calling us, asking us for financial advice. It is now a business that we do. She said, yes, consulting. So um, we have that going. And then of course our intern program. So, um, but if you're looking to um, plan a wedding in the Reno Lake Tahoe area, she said, yes, Lake Tahoe.com. Awesome. And so for the intern interning program, who's that for? Yeah. So that is for um, anybody that is aspiring to be a wedding planner. So it's very wedding planning focused. Um, and again, it's a non-paid internship, but it's educational. So it's not an internship where I'm like, oh, I'm bringing you on and you're just going to go be my workhorse at a wedding. It's not what we're right. doing. I really want people to learn weddings, learn what it means to be a wedding planner. Um, so it's really anybody. We have people kind of all over the Northern California um, 
uh, northern Nevada area applying right now. Um, and it's a three to six month internship anywhere from, you know, June to November. Um, and we're going to be launching it here in a couple of months. We've kind of narrowed down on the applications we have right now. Um, and we're going to take anywhere between two and five for our first year um, and get that. that going. But it's really anybody that wants to be a wedding planner or is interested in that kind of industry. We are going to teach them hands on. And um, even people like you, Jeremy, will probably be reaching out to you at some point um, from a photographer standpoint um, of, you know, jumping in and having these education sessions that we'll be having. I love it. Yeah, I, uh, I think that's smart. And I think everybody needs it. What, um, what does one need as far as licensure? Or is there a license process? Do you guys need anything? Because photographers, we only need a business license. Mm -hmm. That's all we need need um, right. to actually start like saying that we're a business. What do you guys need? Yeah, so we're just like you guys, we got to have a business license. And um, we're licensed through the state of Nevada. And then of course, in every county that we work, um, yeah, so same kind of things. And um, we just got um, it licensed for our consulting side um, because okay. we had to do that. So she said yes, weddings, and then, or she said yes, weddings and events. And then, of course, we're the umbrella. Um, so we just got our licensing up for that. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, yeah. Just because yeah. I want, what I want is people to understand that it's, you, not everybody can just be a coordinator, right. even though, like in our licensed. world, yeah, yeah, in our so world, people a get whole, a camera and they run out and start shooting. Yeah, don't do that. Um, and, you know, you should be licensed and insured um, in every vendor that works with us. I, it's in my contract. In fact, I don't know if it's implemented in this court of law, but I do tell them they have to have, we're not having uncle Joe behind the bar. It will be a licensed bartender. So we only work right. with licensed and insured vendors um, to right. ensure liability and everything like that. But no wedding planners do have to have a business license. We have to be um, legal in that sense. And so, like I said, we're through the state of Nevada and then of course, Washoe County, Reno, Sparks, um, Douglas or not Douglas, uh, El Dorado. I'm trying to think of all the different ones possibly that we're part right. of. Yeah, that's yeah, that's huge. So yeah, the more you so they'll learn you all go. that in the intern program too, because a lot of people just don't even know step one of how to become a business. That's right. That's the very beginning part of this program. If you want to be a business, then we're going to be a business. We're not going to be a hobby. We're going to be a business. <laughs> yeah, so. it's and it's smart and it helps everybody else. So thank you, Carrie, so much for doing yeah. this with me. Um, we're going to sign off Facebook. Fun. I'm going to keep you on here. Okay. Um, so Facebook, thank you guys for watching. Wait, where am I? Look, thank you guys for watching. <laughs> um, we will be back with another episode later on. Cool. All right, bye guys. Awesome. Cool. Thank awesome. you so much. Yay, How did it go? I thought it was fun. It was easier than I thought it was going to be. I was really oh, nervous going into this. Um, just but talking. I like to talk. I'm an extrovert. Yeah. See, I'm different from you, which is funny because uh, most yeah. of the time extroverts would be all about this. Like, oh, I get to talk to people. Um, right. But I, don't I, think know. I think once you start, you kind of, yeah. you're there, you know, you're kind of like, once you start yeah. talking, you're like, but you I'm a planner, everything. Jeremy, like everything in my mm -hmm. life, I have to have it like this. And so to mm -hmm. go on and be raw or um, unprepared. Yeah. That's what had me most freaked, most freaked out. Not I mean, I'm here's scared. my <laughs> list. Like I just <laughs> jot stuff down and yeah. I'm like, I don't even talk about, did I talk about this? And I'm like marking things off. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm an open book. That's one thing And people, I probably should have said, I'm an extreme open book. So when people ask me about my divorce and stuff, like my husband, even he just knows yeah. that this is stuff we talk about. Um, I'm not scared to talk about it, but it's just, I think it's, yeah. I think it's, it's good. It's smart. And you know, we're still recording till the end here. So like, yeah, this oh, stuff cool. will still be on the podcast, which is good. That's fine. Um, yeah. So, I mean, we're stuck, we're stuck in this for now and, um, finding different things to do while we're doing this. Yeah. Um, thank you. Is there oh, uh, that was fun. anything that we didn't touch that you want to touch? Let's see here. Um, I don't think so. I mean, we kind of touched cool. everything. Yeah, I appreciate you doing this. Um, it's so neat to meet people in our community. That's the one thing that yeah. I like, like the set whole raw um, things that you think you would know, maybe you didn't know, and I'm um, getting right. to know people. Yeah. I mean, nobody knows. Like you know, I mean, I learned theoretically everything from you, but I'm sure people are watching this. Like <laughs> Rachel is on there too, and yeah, um, you know, um, they're just they're going to be like, oh, we totally didn't realize that. Maybe people even know you're not like from here, or yeah. that you were married before, and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, if there's something else you want to bring up or talk about, um, I'm happy to do this again with you anytime. Cool. So just let me know, shoot me a message. And my goal is just to keep it going and we'll bring you back and we can either do the same thing Wait. or focus on something else. Um, and how's everything going with the next meeting for um, Weddings of the West? It's going good. So actually that's on my agenda today to get sent out. Um, we originally were going to try to have it, but I just don't think it's safe. Even if they lift everything right. in Washoe County, I just don't think it's safe. And I don't think people are going to want to come yet. So we're going to go, uh, we're going to do um, a live. Zoom. It's going to be Zoom. Yeah. And cool. so that's going to go out today with the link and how to get on there and all of that. Um, we are going to have um, the topic kind of is still, we're working on that right now with Marcy because okay. she's doing content, but definitely that is going to be something I want it to be a little bit lighter. 
I guess is the best way to put it. Right. Not so serious because I think everybody's over hearing the word COVID-19. Like I'm over yeah. hearing that and every day, like my emails and everything. I just, I want it to be lighter. I just want it to be, I don't know, just interactive yeah. and fun. And I don't even know what it looks like yet, but it's, it's coming. But we are going to cool. be um, going Zoom on that one. Well, if, uh, if there's anything you guys need, just let me know, um, okay. content wise or whatever. I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of stuff that you guys can do and I'm sure Marcy's working on it. She's supposed to come on to my thing next couple of days, if not tomorrow. Cool. I cool. think I have her on tomorrow. I can't remember. Um, Sweet. but yeah, well, thank you so much. I'm going to let you go and then I'm going to film your intro, Okay. but have a fun day and you uh, do you have more Thanks. zoom meetings today and all that. Yeah. I do a little bit later. Uh, yeah. Cool. A new client. Cool one of them so nice fingers, we get a booking make it happen you will <laughs> if if they if they i feel like if they're doing zoom and they're going through that they're just gonna book i think so too i think it's just um they have you know they want the reassurance they ask kind of the same questions they do on the phone or on zoom that they do in an email but it's just seeing right. a person or talking to somebody that we're a real person and we're not some scammer i guess or something i don't know right. it's not a money yeah I think they're talking about when you start booking all your vendors i mean it's thousands of dollars they want to know that we're real people Real people that won't run away with your money. Yes. Yeah. All right. No. You can end the meeting anytime. Um, thank you again. I appreciate it. All right. Bye. Bye.